Samsung Galaxy S22 is, in my opinion, one of the best choices, at least on the Android side of things, in late 2023, going into 2024 and beyond. Here's why. This phone came out almost two years ago at this point, along with the S22 Plus and S22 Ultra. And this was Samsung's cheapest premium model at that point, but that really doesn't mean it's not worth your attention. When it comes to the design, even though it's smaller than something like, let's say, the Ultra, it's definitely not less premium. It still has the armor aluminum frame with glass on front and back of the phone. On the front, that's Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which definitely helps with scratch and drop resistance. And I love that it doesn't have a glossy back because that's just a huge fingerprint magnet and whenever phones decide to go with this matte finish I'm all for it plus it looks kind of fancier I'm also a huge fan of this size of the phone 6.1 inches is in my opinion the best size for a phone this just fits in my hand perfectly I can easily use it with one hand and speaking about that 6.1 inch display even though it is smaller it still has the 120 hertz refresh rate it's still a high resolution display with a good pixel density of 425 pixels per inch it's not like leading the industry but it's still really really good colors are really nice and accurate and it's definitely bright enough at least for my use case speaking at 1300 nits so that's outdoors in direct sunlight it can boost its brightness quite a bit it comes with android 12 out of the box but a few weeks ago this actually became upgradable to android 14 with one ui 6 and samsung promises at least four years of software updates for their premium phones so that means you'll still get at least two versions of android along with additional few years of like security updates after that and i honestly really like what samsung did with last year's one ui 5 and now one ui 6 and it really has a lot of great useful features to the point where i'm actually thinking it's even a bit better and more useful than the pixel lineup which was always like the android standard for me when it comes to performance this phone is rocking the snapdragon 8 gen 1 or the exynos 2200 in europe and i know there's been a lot of videos before comparing the two and yes snapdragon does have a bit of an edge over the exynos version but in my opinion they're both really really fast so whichever chip you decide to get with this phone i'm not sure if you can actually decide that just like a geographical location thing but still both versions are really fast and snappy and responsive and you can basically do whatever you want to do in this phone and what's more important in my opinion it's it's gonna stay fast and reliable for the next couple of years and even though the chip is top of the line there's one thing that's a bit more debatable and that's battery life now for me i'm not a power user i don't use my phone a lot for like media consumption and stuff like that i'm kind of trying to cut down on my social media usage as well so to me personally this phone can definitely last the whole day but if you are a power user if you are using your phone maybe even in a bit more professional setting for work stuff like that you might have to top it off occasionally in the evening so that's just something to consider and i believe for most people this battery is going to be more than good enough but if you really are after like the best battery life there is then this may not be the phone for you. It can charge up to 25 watts wired and it supports 15 watt wireless charging along with reverse wireless charging. The S22 also has an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on the screen, which works perfectly and unlocks your phone in less than a second. It's just, it's really fast and responsive and just, it, it works so well that I don't actually have to think about it at all. I just expect my phone to be unlocked just as soon as I pull it out of my pocket. So it is a really good fingerprint sensor compared to some A-series devices from Samsung that you the optical fingerprint sensor which is also fine but it's definitely not on this level and you can absolutely tell the difference and the position of the sensor on the screen itself is in my opinion in the perfect place my finger just rests on it naturally on some phones it tends to be a bit lower or higher up on the screen which is not that natural but this one doesn't have that problem all right so before we get into the cameras we're gonna do a quick lightning round galaxy s22 comes in two storage options that's 128 and 256 gigabytes with eight gigabytes of ram it has ip68 water and dust resistance really good stereo speakers and a really really good haptic motor so vibrations on this phone are comfortable the aluminum frame on this phone is not regular aluminum but something that samsung calls armor aluminum which has a tougher drop and scratch resistance it weighs about 167 or 168 grams which is definitely not heavy which i definitely like and to wrap it all together it does support 5g does support samsung dex and it comes in a variety of cute colors okay cameras it has a main 50 megapixel wide lens at f1.8 as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto with a 3x optical zoom and a 12 megapixel ultra wide 
And these cameras are, in my opinion, one of the best things about this phone. The wide lens is really sharp, uh, the colors are really nice and accurate, dynamic range is great, as well as night mode. It can record video up to 8K at 24 FPS, which in my opinion is still a bit of an overkill because most people don't really have 8K screens that can actually support the full resolution of this footage but hey it's there and it also records 4k up to 60 fps which is slowly but surely starting to become an industry standard and like i said i was really really surprised with the quality of this camera especially like outside in the daylight the results are absolutely amazing but it does have a really really good night mode mode as well one thing that i would mention is that there's still a slight shutter lag like the distance between when you click the button and it actually takes the photo if you decide to take the regular 12 megapixel shot which i actually think most people should do anyway is basically non-existent but if you do switch to the full 50 megapixel resolution it does have like a slight lag when taking the photos samsung is definitely working on improving that and you can see that with each software update so i'm sure it's gonna get even better as the time goes by but other than that like i said this camera is a full package unless you want to zoom in like extremely a lot then go with something like the ultra and you can actually get this phone for about 350 bucks maybe a bit more than that if you choose to go the amazon renewed route and if you decide to go to the like completely dark side of the used market like ebay stuff like that it can get even cheaper than that you get a really good fast chip that's going to stay fast for a long time great software support great cameras an amazing 120 hertz screen and a compact form factor for a change. Okay, but if you're still like, nah, I don't know, it's a bit small, the battery life is not the best, uh, I might wanna go with the Ultra. Well, hey, you can check out this video right up here. Video.